Evolutionary.org, episode 494. Steve Schmee, a.k.a. Steve Smith, and the mobster joining me. How you doing? Good. As I told Steve in a pre-show, this is a very interesting song for me and something that I might look at for myself in the future. So let's get this hit it. Yeah. So our SARM series continues. Today we're going to be doing Testalone, which is Rad 140. Now, Rad 140, it's one of the newer SARMs. It came out, um, you know, with bot with guys who want to get into performance enhancing in the fitness community after LGD. And I would describe it as a stronger, more modern version of LGD. LGD was one of the first SARMs that guys were using in the fitness community. And it was, it was very widespread. And then RAD kind of came along. The idea behind RAD, the way it was developed, was to become a replacement for testosterone replacement therapy or hormone replacement therapy, however we want to put it. And the idea was you would, instead of taking testosterone weekly or any other anabolic steroid weekly for hormone replacement, you would take RAD 140. And the objective was the RAD 140 would have less side effects and less detriments to your health. So just like all these other compounds out there, they were developed for medical purposes which didn't, you know, which may have been used in medical reasons, but then we kind of took it in our, in the fitness industry, the performance enhancing industry, and turned them into weapons as PEDs and jacked up the dosages to use them to our advantage. So that's one of the reasons why RAD 140 is one of the more popular SARMs today. And a lot of guys get on it for all kinds of benefits when it comes to building muscle, helping with recomping and all that good stuff that you would, you would use for it. So look, uh, 2010, that was when the discovery of this compound was first published, you know, and you can, we know that the name of the SARM comes from a company that developed it called Radius Health. And, you know, the interesting thing is that one of the things they found out when they were testing it out was RAD40 had the unique property of countering the prostate enlargement caused by testosterone use. So that's one of the advantages it had for TRT because guys who run TRT now, you have things like sports TRT and we have guys running TRT at high, higher dosages than what their body would normally produce. Example, you see guys running TRT at 150, 175, 200, 300 milligrams a week of testosterone. And in the process, you're going to start getting negative side effects. You're going to start losing your head hair. You're going to have prostate yeah. issues. So RAD was shown to not cause those prostate issues. And it's not going to shed your hair. And it's not going to do a lot of the things that testosterone would do at those kinds of dosages on guys who are on it for a long time. So that's the whole idea behind SARMs and how they're, they've got, you know, less side effects. And, and sadly, a lot of the, the experiments that were done on RAD were done on animals, you know, monkeys and stuff like that, which, you know, is a debate for, for another show. I mean, Mobster and I are both animal lovers and we in no way support yeah. uh, this type of um, nonsense, but that's unfortunately how, you know, that's the way these work. They test them out on animals, then they test them out on humans, and then they put them, put them on market through trial. So, Momster, chime in a little bit. Yeah, one of the things I was going to say here is just uh, information-wise, guys, as Steve said earlier on, developed for one reason, but us bodybuilders, us looking for performance enhancement, jump in and, and we see something. And what's shined on this, Steve, apart from, as you say, the prostate thing, was literally an increase in lean body weight in those monkeys. And uh, one of the things that's significant here, but I would always underline this with a warning, is that the increase in lean mass was dose dependent. What does that mean, guys? The more they gave the monkeys, the more muscle they grew. Simple as. But as we will discuss uh, very shortly, that always comes with a warning. It always comes with a red flag because we're going to talk about suppression, lack thereof, or posit positive or negative and whys and wherefores. So they wasn't looking to see if it's a place to monkeys natural testosterone levels, whereas we as BED users are looking to see if that's an issue. But like I said, what stood out, what shined was that added addition 
of lean muscle mass. And again, specifically dose dependent. And that is a really important point to, to be aware of here. Now, we will get into the dosages. We always recommend what we consider to be the effective doses. And with a lot of these psalms and a lot of the psalm podcasts that we're going to do, you do not need to change the numbers. It is literally the golden number, the optimal amount for you guys to take. I understand wanting more performance, more muscle, more strength, leaner, et cetera, et cetera. But we give you those numbers. There's a little bit of leeway with one or two of them, but it's very important that you stick within those time frames. Back to you, Steve. Now, RAD is a SARM. It's a pure SARM, selective androgen receptor modulator. It's not one of these drugs that are sold as SARMs like GW, SR, or Nutrivol. Yes. You know, it's, it's an actual SARM. And the way these work is they are selective toward those androgen receptors in the body. So they're not going to basically drop a bomb in your body and cause all these side effects that anabolic steroids can do depending on how they're structurally made. And, you know, anabolic steroids, they cause, they can cause DHT side effects. They can cause estrogenic side effects. They can cause androgenic side effects. Keep going. They cause a lot of organ strain on the body and it's a domino effect, water retention, gynecomastia, all these things. RAD should not have that. RAD should not have that. It's selective. So that was the idea of RAD coming out. It was going to give you a lot of these benefits that anabolic steroids could give you, but without the side effects. So it's going to be much more mild on that end. So those are how it works in the body. Now, um, if we're going to compare it to testosterone, we can say that testosterone having, you know, 100 to 100 androgenic to anabolic ratio and on paper rad 140 is 90 to one so mm. that means that it's going to be almost as anabolic as testosterone but not androgenic at all so that means that you can get a lot of that those benefits of lean muscle mass and and you can you can recomp on it and you can you know, really cut down on it and retain muscle mass in the process without giving you those types of side effects. So originally when Rad, I remember when originally Rad would come out, the SARMs grooves were all pushing it as a replacement for hormone replacement therapy or TRT. But many of those guys are actually on TRT using testosterone. Yeah. They're not actually using Rad. So obviously that experiment failed. So the dream of RAD 140 did not come to fruition. The dream of having it, yeah, let's, everyone's going to go on RAD 140, not going to go on testosterone replacement therapy. And that's how these things work. When you're using these experimental types of compounds, that's how things work. It doesn't quite work the way medical use is that. So you have to kind of detach yourself from that and understand yes. RAD 140 has its benefits but it's not going to be a full replacement for testosterone replacement therapy. You can try it yourself and just, you know, try to do, you know, use hormone replacement therapy with RAD140. You can try it, but it's not going to give you those androgenic effects that you're going to want when you're on actual testosterone, you see, because we want those androgenic side effects. We want that boost in libido and we want yeah. that boost in mood. And RAD140 is just not going to do that for you. It's going to basically keep everything at, at a median. I'll jump in here, Steve. Something that sometimes occurs, especially when it comes to performance enhancing drugs, is we're all looking for, you know, the magic bean supplement. We're all looking for the magic bean PED. We want something golden that comes with no side effects and just promotes growth and so on and so forth. And the experts, as Steve said, especially when it first came along, weren't conducting studies. We're talking about Medical studies that were done with the monkeys in the laboratory for the psalm for medical reasons versus sports use. And here's the truth that there's no, I can't think of once, maybe Steve can, a single study that's been used in a performance enhancing uh, context. And then again, here's another thing, of course, right? What happens? The complete and utter lack of controls, and you need those controls. So if the guys say, oh, it was amazing, but they neglect to mention they're on CRT, then what was causing the game? Was it psalms? and testosterone was it psalms and their form of trt whatever form of testosterone you're using 
did one have more protein than the other? Did you have one train more than the other? Were there difference? And yes, the answer is yes, there has to be. So you, you haven't got a control. So it's one of those where rumor and, you know, a, a promotion is not necessarily tied up with the 100% science that we would want. So we, it, I think it's an amazing product. I've looked at the stuff here, both the, the positives from the medical studies and obviously the results that people talk about. But you have to have that awareness. When we do these podcasts, we're looking to give you the truth. So we say, right, is it a great sum? Absolutely. Looking at the stuff, looking at the numbers, looking at what it produces, absolutely a great sum. Is it as beneficial without the estrogenic, androgenic? No, you need some issues. You need some of those other things, as Steve says. Quite simply put, I'm of an age now where something like this would be fabulous. Uh, and certainly very, very soon for me, and, and definitely 100% worth a look. But keep this balanced idea in mind. And again, as I mentioned already, it is dose dependent. So you need to have the idea that if you up the dose, for example, you might cause more than minimal suppression, that you might add more muscle, but as Steve says, there's no, no enhancement. So a lot of guys love how they feel on certain steroids and even psalms when it comes to their sexual side. As Steve said, 100%, if you've got male pattern baldness and, and you know, you, you need certain effects from steroids and you need certain effects from uh, SARMs, then, then, then you know, might still have issues. You, you need to weigh up all these pros and cons. That's why, I mean, I understand why people are coming after help, but 100% where well, you listen to these podcasts and 100% where well, you should go off and do your own research, look at the articles, look at the references. But as I've said on many of these things before, Steve, start with the original studies to see what information is in there. It might not include, you know, the monkeys got bored, but you still need to look at size. You, there will always be a section saying, if we did this much, then we had issues. If we didn't do this much, then we didn't have issues and so on and so forth. Look at those sections of the studies. It's quite simple, guys. Nine times out of 10, you don't have to read 47 pages of a study. You can just look at the conclusions and you can look at where the pluses and minuses, how many in a month is gained, how many in a month is didn't, what we fed them and so on. That's important stuff. And you can relate that over to human beings. But as Steve said, we're both animal lovers. It's, it's, it's a necessity. It's not something that we're very keen on, but you, Steve. So what did they find out in these studies? Let's, let's lay it down. You guys can look up these studies online and kind of see what's, what Rad140 did. And also you can kind of look up the anecdotal evidence, look up our logs, look up the logs that, that guys have done on the forums as well. So we know Rad40, it's really good. Great opportunity if you are overweight and you want to cut down, but you don't want to lose yes. a ton of strength and you don't want to lose a ton of your muscle in the process of cutting down. Rad140 is great to use in that situation because in, in, in medical terms, it's great for muscle wasting diseases. It's good for sarcopenia, sarcopenia which is age-related muscle loss. And it's great for androgenic deficiencies. In other words, if you're deficient in androgens, it's great kind of to, to get it out. But it's not going to be the same effect as actual anabolic steroids, but it's also not going to have the side effects that come with it. So it's really a risk versus reward type situation based on you know what you want to do. So in this situation, we can use this to our advantage as guys who are in our sport. Let's say you get out of shape. You know, we had a pandemic, some, a lot of guys stopped going to the gym. You just got back into the habit of not going to the gym. Maybe you were, you, you, you got off the, the wagon when it comes to your diet, you went through a divorce, you know, stuff happened. You got, you have kids. How many people have kids in the first year? They got, you know, busy with a baby at home that they got to care for. They just don't have the time. It comes on the back burner. So Rad 140 is a great way to kind of get back into it. Um, instead of hopping on anabolic steroids, you can hop on Rad140 instead and work your way back. Use that body memory, use that muscle memory to get back into shape. And Rad140 is going to help that. It's going to help put back on that good quality muscle mass. It's going to help you in a deficit where you're losing a lot of body weight, getting back into shape, hold that muscle and hold that strength. And that's what we saw in studies. So that's the way we can use it at PED dosages. So that's really the, the benefit. So mobster, talk about that a little bit 
and then um, we'll, we'll talk about the side effects and we'll get into some cycle ideas, the way you can use your ad. I'll jump into one additional benefit, guys. And this is one of those testosterone 101 kind of things. Listen, uh, as you get older, your testosterone levels drop. And as you get hold of your risk, for example, and I'm specifically here, a stroke or Alzheimer's, dementia, et cetera, it gets higher. Now, those things are actually connected. It's one of those things, and we actually say this in an article, few people notice that testosterone and DHE have a natural ability to preserve neur neurons, that's the nerves in the brain, and specifically those nerves that are sending signals and beneficial effects on overall neural health. Now, what does that mean? It means that, you know, as you get old, you get more feeble. <laughs> to put it crudely, it's not 100% a given, but generally speaking, older brain doesn't work as quick as it and, and as good as it used to. Your memory starts to fail, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, your risk for stroke and Alzheimer's and so on just gets higher. So therefore, having a, a good level of testosterone actually benefits. It's a plus for TRT. So rest, there's another TRT reference there again, guys. But what happens specifically here is it RAD140 in those studies drastically reduced cell death after, for example, after a stroke. What, what happens with a stroke? Blood supply to the brain. And that blood supply is feeding the, the, the cells, the nerves, the neurons. Not enough, you get clots, you get blockages. That blood, that vein, that artery, that whatever capillary, it's feeding through the, through the brain, fouls, and the cells around it die. And essentially that's a very sort of brief, very simplistic explanation for what causes a stroke. Rad 140 helped that not to happen in, in, in simple terms again. So, I mean, sort of, you need to look this stuff up, guys. And I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to go too deep into this particular stuff. But having a neuroprotective element, I would think, again, as an older athlete, 57, I'll be 58 very soon. It's definitely something that older athletes should look at as a possibility, as a, a, a an additional benefit and something that might prove useful for them as they get older. Now, you younger guys, it shouldn't be an issue, but nevertheless, what, what the hell, it's an added bonus. But the older guys, 100%, pay attention to that particular aspect, look it up, look at the references, look at the studies, and tell me what you think, uh, especially in the comments section, especially on the threads on the forum. I'd be fascinated to hear uh, if, they, if it's actually used outside, because as we know, lots of psalms didn't always go on to be developed in the way that they were, they were hoping for. I'd be fascinated to see if not just looking at a, a replacement for TRT, not just for the benefits on the prostate, but they actually looked at this aspect as well and used it in, in certain settings to improve uh, the literally mental health, uh, the, 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 the functions of the brain. Thank you, Steve. So let's get into the side effects. Um, RAD 140, it is going to cause very minimal suppression. We're going to compare yes. it to testosterone. You go on testosterone after a couple of weeks on testosterone, even at a TRT dose. All right. doesn't matter if you're running 100 milligrams a week or you're running 1,000 milligrams a week. You get your LH and FSH tested. It's going to be zero. It's going to drop to zero. Say it was five. It's going to drop to zero. That means your pituitary glands are shutting down. They're becoming suppressed. And that's what happens. Your body realizes, hey, I've got too much of this hormone. I'm going to shut down. And that's what happens. With RAD, your LH would go from five to three or two and a half, something like that. So it is slightly suppressive, but it's not going to shut you down. Now, what is the advantage of that? When you come off of the RAD, your body will recover much more quick than having to go from zero back to five. It's just going to have to go from 2.5 or three back to five. And that's going to be a hell of a lot easier on the body. So we've seen guys over the years run SARMs and run RAD 140 and have a much easier time bouncing back. And then over the course of years and years of using these PEDs, SARMs, you can go, you can cycle them on, cycle them off, cycle them on, cycle them off, and you won't get that wall eventually where your body is just like your HPTA is just fried. But we see that all the time on anabolic steroids. Guys, especially who start using anabolic steroids in their early 20s, by the time they're in their mid-30s, their HPTA is fried. Because taking your HPTA and shutting it down and then recovering, shutting it down and recovering over and over and over takes its toll. But with RAD, you can 
suppress it a little bit, come back, suppress it a little bit, come back, and you still have a healthy HPTA later on. We've seen that with the blood work. That's what we know from anecdotal evidence. I'll jump in here, Steve, and say, as always, there's a caveat here, guys, and, and essentially it's dose dependent. Uh, I've argued on the forums with a member and uh, agreed on one particular point here, and he said quite simply that we're running SARMs at the, the higher dosages than we use in the studies for medical reasons and for the, the point of the study, but we are running them at typically less levels, lower levels, than we would find about steroids. So he said the fact that they have some suppression or what we call minimal suppression should only be taken with regards to the dose, which is still more than a medical, less than the, the anabolic uh, in this particular example. So keep that in mind. If for example, and we don't advise that you do this, but you start running hundreds of milligrams a week, 500 milligrams a week, et cetera, et cetera, then there will be more side effects. There will be more suppression. But as Steve says, I think the phrase that Steve's using it previously, blood tests don't lie. You run it at the doses that we suggest, you get the benefits that we're talking about, and you don't see complete and utter shutdown. So that's that's the thing. Suppression is suppression is suppression, but it's not completely and utterly versus what it would be on anabolic steroids. I, I, I said in a pre-show to Steve, it's like only switching half off. Keep that in mind. But you have to run it at the doses that we talk about. You have to run it at those effective doses. And an effective dose is the one with the least amount of side effects with the most amount of positives. It's as simple as that. You start going crazy, guys, and I don't want you to come running back to us and say, but you said, but you said, we didn't say that. We did not say that. I mean, we're going to get into the dashes, we're going to get into the cycles, and I want you to pay attention. You will see that those numbers are going, they're not going to be four, four, five, six hundred 600 milligrams a week. They're just not. They're not going to be just two, three times what we've recommended before. It doesn't work like that. It shouldn't work like that. But what another positive from what Steve just said as well is, and this is something we see again with cycling, doing the anabolic steroid cycle, the PCT, and then a SARM cycle. Some guys, I'm not keen on this particular idea, running um, straight from an anabolic cycle into a SARM cycle because of the lack of suppression, because you haven't completely recovered. So therefore you are still suppressed. So I'm not keen in my opinion, and it's just my, where I differ with some of the other guys on the forums, moderators, reps, et cetera, where they recommend SARMs in a PCT. It's not something that I'm particularly keen on because I'm thinking if you haven't completely recovered, if you have had suppression, then you are still essentially hammering that now. You haven't given it a chance to sort yourself out. You haven't given yourself a chance to recover. Rad, for example, for me, Steve, I couldn't see me wanting to bang this into a PCT. I, I can understand sometimes the logic where the guys are coming from, but I would rather, in my mind, complete time off, full recovery, and then 100% look at a psalm like this because, as I said, the positives are fantastic. So let's not knock it too much. Any of the comments that we make in regard to side effects, suppression, et cetera, apply to the majority of psalms, not just RAD 140. RAD 140 is an amazing, so very, very positive, something definitely that I'm going to look at in the future, 100% state. Estrogenic side effects, you should not, let me repeat, you should not have any estrogenic side effects with RAD 140. So if you, if you run it and you are, you're running a pro-hormone because it's, not, it's just not possible. Remember, these are selective. So here's the thing. What I recommend is that you come on our forums and you use an approved SARM source. Very, very yes. important. Otherwise, yes, yes. you're going to get screwed. You're going to get ripped off. You're going to be using the fake stuff. So, um, And another thing, too, high blood pressure and insomnia and all these other androgenic side effects that some people deal with, that's not going to happen on SARMs either. So that's the beauty part of using these SARMs, that's the beauty part, is that you should not have to deal with these types of uh, these types of side effects. So I'll let Mobs ran a little bit on, yeah. on fake SARMs and, and how common <laughs> they are out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll kind of get into, we'll, and then we'll get into the dosages and how to run it. Yes. I mean, this is something we mentioned in the previous show, uh, Steve, oh, man. The number of times guys have come onto the forums and they've used a particular brand, which you will not name. It's not the only brand that's ever been guilty of this, but it does seem to be the one that's the most guilty. A particular brand 
and I've had issues with gyno. A particular brand, I've issues with water retention. And you go, you, if the product is used as we're going to suggest, and the positives vastly outweigh the negatives, then why are you having issues? And the reason you're having issues is because the product does not contain what it says on the fucking label, even if it's got a minimal amount of the psalm in question, what we was expecting to find in that particular product. They nine times out of ten, in the we, we, we can just see from the blood pressure and the water retention and the gyno issues that it has been spiked. And it's almost certainly been spiked with some sort of pro hormone. Pro hormones being cheaper than anabolic steroids, and pro hormones being cheaper in this particular case than the psalm in question. I've, I, I, I've kind of excused the behavior like once because people, if you, if you big up a product with your promotion and you say it's this anabolic, it's this fantastic, you're going to feel when you're using it, et cetera. There's almost, and I mean almost, an excuse for spiking it in those circumstances so that the user gets a response. Because here's what happens sometimes with some of the guys, right? They go, I've on a psalm and I've gained four pounds in four weeks. I'm thinking I run on a 12-week cycle. So you do the math and you go, well, then you'll be 10 or 12 pounds at the end of the cycle. What's the problem? Uh, where they're expecting steroid-like effects. So they're thinking they're going to gain one to two pounds a week, which means 12 to 24 pounds at the end of a 12-week cycle, for argument's sake. And so therefore, there's almost, almost an excuse for a company to spike it. But here's the reality. If we're saying that a, a product like RAD140 comes with minimal sides, it's all positive, it's got new neurological advantages, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, don't expect anabolic effects. And definitely, if you see any of those kind of side effects, I'd say that your product's been spiked. And ultimately, it does harm the industry. It harms all the approved sources. It harms all the reputable companies. It harms you guys. And that's just, just the business and the industry. It harms you specifically because you might have issues with blood pressure already. You might have issues with gyno. It might cost you thousands of dollars to go and fix that kind of stuff. You don't, you're looking to get lean and here you are bloated on water. That's just, if it happened in a pharmaceutical company, Steve, in a medical situation, you'd be able to sue these guys crazy. So here's, a, so you have to have that in mind. It's why we ultimately, this, it, it brings a nasty taste to the mouth, Steve, when companies spike products. And, it, and it, it's reflected all the legit, all the trusted, Every single company that's trying to do the right thing, that's trying to help their customers, it reflects on them as well, and it shouldn't. So keep that in mind. By all means, come on the forums and check. We have approved sources. We will tell you what, who you can trust, who you can't trust. Nine times I said to this, it's the same company every single time, Steve. So guys, you come on, even if we, the forum members, the moderators on the website, said it, you will see members themselves come on and post, that I've taken this company's product, here's what happened and see for yourself. Back to you, Steve. So let's talk about dosing. Uh, dosing anywhere from, for a male, anywhere from 10 up to 20, up to even 30 milligrams, absolute maximum. Females, about half that dose. Females, 2.5 to 7.5, maybe 10 at the most milligrams a day. And then how long do you need to run SARMs? Um, you know, eight weeks is a good SARM stack cycle uh, length. To run 12 weeks is a good length. I wouldn't go longer than that. Some guys go up to 14 or 16 weeks. You have that flexibility, but you you really want to. I, I would cut cut it at 12. You're gonna that's Five three weeks. months. That's a long time to be on. Yes. So and then one of the things about SARMs is that you can use a lot of flexibility. Um, in they're a lot quicker acting because they have shorter half lives. Most of them have 20. Rad is probably around 24 hour half life. And then, so it's in your system within a few days at, at a peak, right? If you take it daily, it's in your system at a peak. So you can take it once a day or you can take it twice a day. It's up to you. Either way will work fine. And it's going to be out of your system quick too. So that's another reason why you recover so much quicker on SARMs than you want to analog steroids. Analog steroids could take many weeks to be out of your system. So your body's not going to start recovering until it's out completely, you see? But with SARMs, they're out so fast that you'll start recovering a much quicker. So a lot of guys like to run SARMs. They'll run eight or 12 weeks, come off four to six weeks, 
and then they'll recover properly. And then they'll just go back on another SARM cycle and rinse and repeat. So yeah. those are the things to watch out for. And then one more thing, um, you know, liver. Um, again, we're using PED dosage. There is going to be some liver strain with SARMs. Um, guys who say otherwise are wrong. You can look at blood work to show that. Any foreign substance you're putting in your body is going to have to get go through the liver and go through the kidneys. That's just how it is. The kidneys have to cleanse it out. So it's nothing like anabolic steroids, but there is still some liver. So I recommend liver support when you're on it for that reason. So you can run uh, maybe half a dose of the normal liver support that you would run on anabolic steroids just for that reason. Again, we're using PED dosages, guys. We're not using the pharmaceutical therapeutic dosages. So there is. So, Mobster, finish your final thoughts and take us to the disclaimer. It was a great show. Hope everyone learned a lot about RAD. One very quick point here, guys, uh, before the final thoughts, et cetera, is quite often, and there's, some of the companies are starting to change this, but for the most part, when RAD 140 arrives, it's typically in liquid form. It should be. There are some sort of gels out there, and uh, certain companies are using different carriers. But most of the ones that you'll see, and we got recommended sources on our forum for this particular reason, the carrier is a typically a very potent alcohol. And it's not very nice. It's meant it basically, it's, it's, it's not like going to the bar and, and grabbing a shot. It's not meant to be a brandy or a sherry. It's just the carrier for the for the psalm. And a lot of you guys are like, oh, it tastes nasty, it burnt my throat. Neck it, get it down your neck, stop fucking around. Get the stuff into the system. Now, that means what we typically can suggest then, for example, if it's a small amount of water or a little bit of apple juice or a little bit of grape juice, just to get that taste out of your mouth, if it's that big of an issue. Something else they said very quickly there, and, and again, I would probably go, my preference was always for the shorter cycles. If for no other reason, if you decided to go as many as 14 weeks, You've only really, the most you've only really got, say, two opportunities of that year. Whereas if you run it for a shorter period of time, a on, a off, a on, a off, gives you three or four chances through the year. So that would be my thinking. Again, and if you're really keen on adding muscle as quickly as you can, but as safely as you can. Final thought, Steve, 100%. I, but I've not really done any research, proper research on this uh, product, on this SARM, until. The rep, you know, then we decided we were going to do this podcast. And I just scrolled down, read through it, and I was like, where's this been all my life? It's just, honestly, the positive vastly outweighed the negatives. And I mean, by that nine to one ratio that we talked about earlier, uh, it's definitely something worth looking at. And with the neurological benefits for the older athlete, guys, it's suitable for all of you, but I can see this being especially suitable for the older athlete who have this additional benefit at the end. As always, please note, we are not doctors and the opinions on this podcast are hours and hours alone. It's our view and based on experience and views on the topic. A podcast of informational purposes and entertainment only, the freedom of speech and the First Amendment applies.